Here's your host for this morning's edition of America's Fabric. Good morning. I'm Dr. Elizabeth Lee Valite. I'm an independent physician in private practice in Tucson and Dallas and the author of several health books for consumers. My medical websites are www.herplace.com and www.internationalhealthstrategiesltd.com. Today, my guest and I explore how the 2010 healthcare law undermines our American tradition of individual initiative and the liberty for each of us to have the freedom <clears throat> to decide how we spend our money, how we share our productivity with others, as well as what we will be allowed to have in the way of medical treatment. These are our founders' core beliefs making up the threads that have woven the fabric of America and make our country unique in the entire world. In June 2010, the Supreme Court ruled that the 2010 health care law was constitutional, primarily based upon Congress's ability to tax us. The Supreme Court also reviewed the constitutionality of the mandate for all states to expand Medicaid coverage. The court ruled that the federal government could not force the states to expand Medicaid services, but states could choose. Just to clarify, Medicaid is the program for people under age 65 who cannot afford health insurance. Medicare is the federally run government program for everyone over age 65. Just exactly what does the Medicaid expansion mean for the average person? Will you really have better or lower cost medical services? <clears throat> or will you be left out in the cold when you need to see a doctor because doctors have stopped taking Medicaid? Will your taxes go up even more to pay for medical care for other people when Medicaid is expanded to cover 133% of the federal poverty level? The Medicaid expansion also means that older people on Medicare will have to be denied medical care to save money so that younger people can have their medical care paid for with the expansion of the taxpayer-funded Medicaid. I have a guest with me today to discuss how the expansion of government-controlled Medicaid actually undermines our founders' vision of America as a country where self-reliance, autonomy, and self-determination would be the cornerstones of our lives. Carolyn Cox is a retired businesswoman who understands American free market principles. She and her husband risked their own money and started an engineering firm and grew the business, creating lots of jobs and training many people over the years. She knows what it is like to risk capital, sometimes making a profit and sometimes experiencing losses, and being paid only if they met clients' needs. This is the very definition of capitalism. She has also developed employee profit sharing and pension plans. <clears throat> Carolyn has run for Congress and is currently the president of the Tucson Conservative Forum, a nonpartisan educational group that helps to focus on using America's founding principles to solve today's complex issues. But before we hear the business person's perspective on these issues, I'd like to make a few brief comments as a physician about what the Medicaid expansion means for patients. Patients need to understand that the existing Medicaid program in Arizona called ACCESS already results in longer waits for treatment, fewer choices of doctors, fewer choices of medicines and other treatments, and medical outcomes that are not as good as what we see with patients who have private insurance and can decide what doctors to see and what treatments to choose. In addition, as the state and federal governments expand the number of people who are eligible for Medicaid, the state plans to cut reimbursements to doctors and hospitals to about 50 to 56 percent of what private insurance companies pay to doctors and hospitals. With such drastic cuts in payments, 
many doctors and hospitals will not be able to continue in business. More patients and fewer doctors mean longer and longer waits for treatment. With fewer hospitals, you have fewer places to get treatment you need. The expansion of government control with Medicaid also means that medical treatment decisions will be taken out of the hands of your doctor. Instead, medical decisions will be approved by government-appointed non-physician bureaucrats on the Independent Payment Advisory Board. IPAB is set up under the new health care law to approve or deny medical care based on patients' ages, medical condition, and cost of treatment. As a physician, I see many problems ahead for patients who will now be forced into the new Medicaid expansion. Yet in spite of having the choice not to expand Medicaid, Arizona is moving forward to do just that and potentially bankrupt the state again. How can that happen? Let's ask Carolyn Cox to describe what Arizona experienced under Governor Napolitano the last time Medicaid was expanded. Carolyn, welcome to America's Fabric, and thank you for being with us today. Tell us more about Governor Napolitano's Medicaid expansion. Well, <clears throat> Governor Napolitano um, expanded Medicaid so that it covered people who made not just 100% of the poverty level, but up to 133% of the federal poverty level. Then when the tobacco money dried up, uh, the state was left with a $3 billion deficit, and the legislators had to find ways to cut services, remove people from Medicaid, and raise taxes to make up that shortfall in money. Many of the states will not uh, expand Medicaid. States are not required to expand Medicaid, and um, I think that the federal match from will drop to where then the states will be on on the hook to pay for all of these additional people and um, then we're going to be facing the same thing again of having to drop people off of Medicaid. Well and having to raise taxes for the rest of the taxpayers to pay for the supposedly free care for others. And I think people may not realize that it was promised that there'd be no new taxes with the last expansion of Medicaid because we were going to use the tobacco tax money to pay for it. And then the tobacco tax money dried up and the taxpayers were on the hook or legislators had to decide what services to cut. Well, what are some other ways that people are getting stung by the promises made for the new health care law? Well, for example, the uh, Medicare tax, which uh, it actually only applies to people who make over $200,000 or couples who make over $250,000. But just remember, these are the people who are the entrepreneurs and the people who are paid, uh, are creating jobs. And the, um, the tax is really not, not a Medicare tax. But they're going to raise what is withheld from an employee's check from 1.45% to 2.35%, and that is actually going to go in to fund Medicaid. There's also going to be a device tax of about 2.3%, and what this means is that uh, people who manufacture, say, new knee replacement parts or new shoulder replacement parts are, are simply either not going to continue to manufacture in the United States or will just go out of business. We also know that health insurance premiums are rising at about 10% or more per year since 2010 for most families, and the IRS just released estimates the health care premiums will cost a family of four approximately $20,000 a year uh, under this new law. College students are now facing premiums two to four times what they paid before the new health care law, and health insurers will be allowed to charge up to 50% higher premiums for smokers. That amounts to nearly $4,250 per year for smokers who are 55 or older. There really are a lot of people who were promised a lot of things free that are finding out that they are going to have to start paying the piper. 
And there are further significant provisions of the health care law that will be taking effect in 2014. So you will be seeing an ugly, confusing, and prolonged fight for power and control over your medical care without you having much say-so in the decisions that affect your life. One of these is the increasing dominance of IPAB in deciding priorities for how money is spent, and that means, ladies and gentlemen, deciding what medical care you will be allowed to have approved by IPAB. Carolyn, I wondered if you would comment on whether IPAB is actually undermining the Constitution with the power it has been given under the new health care law. Well, there's a book that's just come out. It's called Beating Obamacare. It's by uh, Betsy McCoy, uh, and she explains it like this. IPAB is a radical departure from Medicare as we've known it. In creating IPAB, Congress cedes nearly all control over Medicare spending to unelected bureaucrats. Congress is admitting it doesn't want to make unpopular cuts and then face the seniors. The Obama health law says that whatever cuts IPAB recommends automatically go into effect unless Congress enacts a different set of Medicare changes with the same net savings. This arrangement, making IPAB into a law-making body, turns the U.S. Constitution on its head, many people argue. And I certainly agree that having unelected, non-physician bureaucrats making medical decisions is a major assault on our Constitution, and it's a major assault on our very right to life when government-appointed non-physicians are making treatment decisions for us based on how old we are or whether we're fat or smoke or drink or they've just decided we may not be politically correct enough to get the approved treatment. In addition to all these problems, there's the potential devastating economic impact. Let's look at what's happening in Massachusetts today. 45% of the entire state budget is now taken up with the cost of expanded Medicaid that went into effect in Massachusetts in 2006. If that becomes the case in Arizona, we have no choice but to then cut money for schools, police, roads, and other state services in order to pay for the medical care under the Medicaid expansion. And I would like to, for people to think about the Medicaid expansion as the way the state and federal governments are teaming up to usurp your freedom and control more and more aspects of your life, including medical care. In the past, you have been free to choose your medical care, your health insurance policy, what type of coverage you need, and how much you want to spend on it either from a selection offered by your employer or from an individual policy you buy on your own. The bottom line is, until now, you have been free to decide what to buy with your own money and whether to pay for medical services on your own if needed. Under the new Medicaid expansion, more and more people will now fall under state or federal control for their medical choices and services. In practical terms for patients, this new bureaucracy and state control means HMOs on steroids. If you didn't like the managed care of the 80s and 90s, the new Medicaid expansion will be even more destructive of your personal choices for doctors and treatments you'll be allowed to have. This new government expansion into our lives clearly conflicts with the core values on which America was founded. In 2010, Arizona passed Prop 106, the Health Care Freedom Act, so that people would be guaranteed the right to spend their health care dollars as they see fit. The new Arizona Medicaid expansion and federal health care law both violate the Health Care Freedom Act, which over 60 percent of Arizona voters approved in 2010. Carolyn, people say if you don't expand Medicaid, how will the poor get medical care, and how can we provide options for Arizona citizens 
What could we be doing that is that are actually more in keeping with our founders' principles of self-reliance, autonomy, and self-determination? Well, true charity care for the poor, such as the church-based free clinics already working in several states, such as New Jersey and Texas. True free clinics for the poor, as proposed in Arizona Volunteer Physicians Act, which the insurance lobbyists in Phoenix have blocked for all of us. Open purchase of medical insurance across state lines. This would give Arizonans the freedom to purchase the same lower cost health insurance policies as citizens of other states have. This was passed by the legislators and then vetoed by the governor bowing to insurance lobbyists who wanted to control your choices. We should include catastrophic or in other words, critical illness cover, which policies for serious illnesses included with uh, individual health savings accounts for people to control how their money is spent for more routine medical services. And we all know that just like with automobile insurance would be so important, uh, would be so expensive you couldn't afford it if it tried to cover oil changes and all of that kind of thing. So stop trying to cover everything for everyone with the result that everyone pays for things they don't need or want. I absolutely agree. Here we have in my office employees who are all menopausal <coughs> and our health insurance policies have to cover fertility treatments. It's absolutely absurd and it's only in the healthcare market that we see these impossible demands and then everyone having to pay more. I agree in medical and economic studies across the country, from private business to state employees in Indiana and other states, health savings accounts and critical illness policies with high deductibles for catastrophic situations have been consistently demonstrated to lower health care cost, lower emergency room visits, improve medical outcomes, and improve patient satisfaction in every situation in which they have been used. We have the data to show they work. In summary, the Medicaid expansion may feel and sound like a feel-good solution to medical services for the poor. But in reality, expanding Medicaid here in Arizona and in any other state has three major problems that conflict with our core values of America's core concepts. Number one, more government control over our lives. Whether state or federal doesn't matter, it's government control. Two, less choice of treatment and doctors and hospitals. Someone else will decide what you are allowed to have. And three, raising your taxes and still bankrupting the state. We already see this happening in Massachusetts. It's coming to Arizona if we continue down this path. Instead of true charity-free care, which we have physicians who will volunteer to provide, such care ennobles and empowers both the giver and the receiver. But the state and federal expansion of Medicaid is like a cancer eroding your self-determination and initiative day by day as you become more and more dependent on what the government allows. Like a poisoned lollipop, it sugarcoats the threat to your life with a promise of free medical care only to have you forced into third world level of quality in waiting time and options for services when you're sick or denying the medical care altogether if you don't meet the government's criteria for age or state of health. I just had a patient last week who is 80 years old and he said, 
I was just told that because of my age, Medicare is no longer going to pay for my heart medicine. This is coming for all of us. The only winners in this whole situation are the insurance companies that are part of the exchanges administering Medicaid and the bureaucrats who have control of your health and your life. Under our founders' principles, the United States of America became the greatest success for liberty, a just society, and religious tolerance the world had ever seen. We are rapidly losing our foundations, our core values, and our individual freedom. These core values that make up the fabric of America are being shredded daily by the power elite who focus on the collective good and make decisions about how the rest of us have to live our lives, yet exclude themselves from the same requirements. We just saw that recently with an elected representative on the East Coast who has for years espoused an anti-gun philosophy and recently had an intruder in his home whom he shot. It's okay for the power elite to have their rights while they take them away from the rest of us. This is the antithesis of our founders' emphasis on individual liberty, that they set up our Constitution to protect and risk their lives, their fortunes, and their sacred honor to ensure that we lived as free men and women. Will you let the state and federal governments collude to rob you of your medical freedom, your privacy, your right to spend your own money, and your right to decide how to share the fruits of your labors? Or will you stand up and speak out and engage in the fight to preserve your right to determine your destiny? Carolyn, is there anything you'd like to say in conclusion? I, I just think that it's very, very important for everybody to understand what is really happening. This is an expansion, a huge, huge expansion of Medicaid. And we know absolutely that people on Medicaid do not do as well as people under private insurance or even people who don't have any insurance at all. And we do know that the hospitals are going to begin to limit uh, uh, even how long you can spend in the hospital and after you come out of the hospital, whether or not you can even have physical therapy uh, be covered. It it is going to be extremely serious for seniors, and we have really changed uh, how seniors are able to still be active and get around with new knees, new hips, and this kind of thing, uh, heart bypasses, and all of that is going to be drastically limited for seniors. And I think people don't realize that they need to start planning today, need to start letting their legislators know how they feel, but also plan today to have a way to maintain their freedom as the government cuts off more and more of our choices. Well, Carolyn, I want to thank you for being with us today and adding the business person's perspective. I know as a physician, I have been extremely concerned about what I see happening to patients, and I know how it can affect their lives. I know that if we don't have timely access to the kind of medical care we need, people can die prematurely. And as a physician, I've been very concerned about that. But your perspective on the business side of things in terms of what works and what allows people to retain their freedom and cost less is extremely important. This is Dr. Valit signing off today.